Hi, I'm Larry Brumwell, producer of Pod Climber. Alan Watts and other local climbers had set the stage in the early to mid 80s for Smith Rock to lead the way into the new era of sport climbing in the U.S. 1986 saw the first large influx of well-known and not so well-known climbers to Smith. These world travelers were seeking European style sport routes and still very popular at the time, thin cracks. This is the story. I think that Smith has established its, itself as a world-class climbing area, and it's become a very famous area. And once that has happened, it, it's never going to go back to the way it was, where it's just a, a few people, you know, a group of friends out here climbing. It's never going to go back to that, but that's, that's fine. I, I think it's going to be a much, it'll, for several years, and perhaps indefinitely, be a place where um, people will come to, really test themselves. The climb was, it just wasn't important to me. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just, it was just a route. And even up until when I came back from Europe, the route. You know, it was something that had gone on a while, but my attitude towards it was never very good. It's just, I didn't look at it as being like it would be that big of an accomplishment. Because for one thing, I didn't think it was going to be that hard. And then I go to Europe and see some of the climbs and see that, that Rude Boys is harder than Revelations, for instance. And then, if I would have known that, my attitude would have been much different about it. I, I assumed that it was well below that difficulty. At that level, everything to a certain extent is a physical problem. No matter how good you are technically, you're not going to be able to do that climb if you're not strong enough to use the hold. So it's a physical problem that way. But then again, you could be a, a complete thug and not be able to, to be able to use your feet and you wouldn't have a chance. those people who are going to be the real purists, they'll continue to play their game, that's fine, that's what they're good at, that's what they enjoy doing, but U.S. rock climbing over the next few years is just going to be totally changed by what's going, over, going on in Europe and what these guys are doing here and what these guys are doing wherever they go in the U.S. Um, hang dogging will cease to be an issue, um, putting bolts in a rappel will always sort of be an issue, but still it's going to it's going to be done just everywhere. I mean, these guys here are talking about bringing their bolt gun all across the U.S. to put up routes. So. Okay. Yeah, Jean-Baptiste Thibault, how old are you? Uh, 24. And since uh, how long are you climbing? Uh, 12 years ago, 12, 12 years. 12 years? 
Mm -hmm. um, is it your first time in the USA? No, it's uh, my second time. I, I climbed in uh, Joshua Tree two years ago. Two years ago? Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Yes, it's a very nice place, but uh, Smith's work is, is better. <laughs> Even though Trabu did the first free ascent of Rude Boys, he still said it was Watt's route since Alan did the cleaning and bolting. It's not my route. For me, it's a, the name. It's the route of Alan. He tried before me, and he put the bolt. I I done just the first ascent, but it's it's not my route because I don't put the bolt. I don't clean the hole. You have two correct moves. The first one is just at the start. You have two moves in a small uh, two-finger pocket. Very hard move. And after you have a, a Dyna, Dyna move at the end. And this one for me, it's, uh, it's difficult because I, I'm, I'm uh, small. I'm, I'm uh, short and this move is hard. And after you have a, the last move, it's, it's uh, another jump. I think it's a, a French 80+. 80+. 80+. Yeah. And, uh, say in American, uh, maybe 530C. Uh, The Smith Rock start climbing is just amazing for getting good finger strength. The climbing here is a real European limestone type of climbing, plus the protection here and the ethics here allow you to do the hardest standard moves in relative safety, which is really good, which is what is happening now, which is where the sport is going in France and Germany, England and now America, which is good to see. Darkness at noon represents uh, definitely where the sport is going. Dead pointing all the way, good protection, really continuous hard climbing, which is uh, really fun. Passing the 
third bolt, getting to the fourth bolt, just above the third bolt there's a series of really hard dead points with nothing for your feet and it's just as you're losing your strength so you've really got to keep it together while there. Very thin holes and just nothing for your feet and that's a really hard sequence, especially after you've done so much hard climbing below. This is terrific. It's got such steep face climbing that's so well protected. You can, at least I feel like I can try some really hard things without having to worry about the pro. Harnesses with buckles had only been available for a few years and were not trusted by everyone. A tie-in waist sling with sewn leg loops was common. This is, this is different than anything I've done here so far because it's a crack, for one, and because it's overhanging for a section. But it's fun to mix up crack climbing and face climbing occasionally.
The hardest move was the very last one, getting up to that big ledge. I could see what I had to do, and it was basically a race against time. <laughs> I had so much strength and energy left, and I knew I just had to, to do it. In. So you hold the rope tense? Yeah, the rope will come, the loose ends that you'll tie into will come through the front. You just tense it down and that'll keep the beam in place while you flip it. That way you don't have to mess around with the tape. Okay, I'll go try that. that this from Australia. They have spinners all over the place there. Oh. bottoms of your feet clean under smith rock conditions and also soften the impact of ground falls. Wait a sec. Let me give her a brush. Never seen a pure rag in the line. Amazing. This first hole is a hole on the climb is a bullet hole. Yeah. This route probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for rednecks. Watch that tube gone to the other side of the river to shoot it.
Many climbers at the time used double ropes with quick draws pre-attached for difficult clips. A few young uh, climbers in, in the US are thinking about climbing like we are climbing in, in, the, in France, in Europe. The crack climbers are too old to, to really enjoy uh, face climbing and to understand what's going on uh, in Europe.
so beautiful road and wall and the rock is so fantastic that I would like for myself to do something new. I'm uh, 29 years old and I start climbing at, uh, I don't know, maybe 14. You have to walk to, to reach a crack and to walk down to reach another crack and it's not exactly our, our style uh, of climbing. I prefer here with so many routes on a small place. The crux is uh, just before the last boat. It's uh, some very small edges, and you have a, a long reach to to reach. Uh, it's only small edges, and you have to reach it, and then to have good balance move to clip it, and then to pass the bolt. It's very accepted here to just hang on moves, figure them out, lower down, and try to put them all together, but not lowering down after every time. It means that you can do a lot more hard routes than if you were just going by traditional California, say, ethics, and just lowering every time you fell. So that's really fun to climb an area where you can just climb. about 130 feet and relatively sustained for most of the route.
The men here climbing tend to be a lot more uh, concerned about their clothes and their bright colors and their coordinated outfits than the women. <laughs> we have the best selection of lycra of anywhere in the country and I think they match the high standards of climbing here very well. <laughs> Smith Rocks is really intriguing is it's probably the most advanced in terms of grades and difficult climbs in the U.S. The gunks has nothing to compare with the concentration of hard climbs nor the southeast or any of the other face climbing or crack climbing areas. We traveled a lot, uh, really extensively last year throughout California and Wyoming and into the east and southeast. And since I left Devil's Tower and started traveling cl and climbing more areas, and like, especially climbing in the gunks and in the southeast, I really got intrigued by face climbing versus thin crack climbing, which is what I'd stuck to previously. And the more and more I did of that, the more I liked it. And so Smith Rocks, which absolutely excels in both thin crack and face climbing, became just the ultimate destination. You have to sort of get your hands in a rather tenuous position and, and trust your balance enough to bring your feet high to stand on a knob. Oh. Basically, you don't have to worry on the hard roots about um, getting hurt or not getting the pro in because they're well protected by good bolts that have been placed in the right places because they've been placed by wrap. And that's a European tradition that Smith Rocks is the first place that has really taken away, ran away with it.
It scared me when I saw it more than the East Face did. The East Face I could see. It was, it was better locks, it was endurance. This was highly technical and I knew Watts was a master at that. And, and the line looked so improbable that it lured me for that reason alone. It's long, sustained, it's sequential, and there's a great deal of endurance as well as power climbing on it. about 110 feet with a very difficult, very difficult section to begin with. It's very, very sequential and small jam. And you're crossing over and everything's fast. Everything's fast and it's dead pointing. And your feet are small and it's, and it's the last move of that sequence is the crux. And you can fall off as I did and as everybody has has tried it a fair number of times there before you've, before you've wired that section. Smith is as good as the best French limestone. And this, the tuft, is an American's answer to limestone. It's pockets, it's edges, it's, it's extreme technical difficulty over long expanses of overhanging rock. No rest, and that's the beauty and that's of, of this area, and that's where the sport is going. It overhangs, it's got an endurance section that you get a chalk up in the center and that's it. From then on you are you're on your own. In America, Smith Rock stands out as being trending tor towards world standards as far as face climbing goes, yeah. and it stands alone right now. There are a few areas that are catching up, Waco Tanks, Texas, Colorado struggling, but right now, in this, every year, or every couple of years, there's a wave, and 
at the crest of that wave is an area that really yeah. there's only one place to be for the serious climber during those periods and it happens to be Smith Rock right now. Get a nut in. Yeah. Whoa. I heard that you do something nice on uh, East West. I done the first pitch on site. I would like to to do uh, East West of Monke, mm -hmm. maybe maybe today.